So hi everyone, my name is Shemritsur David and I'm the CTO of Secret Double Octopus. I would like to welcome you to the Passwordless Enterprise. So a little bit about myself, uh, as I said, I'm the CTO and co-founder of Secret Double Octopus. I have a PhD from the Hebrew University in Jerusalem and I'm a senior academic researcher and lecturer of engineering. My research was always focused on data security, cryptography and identity management. And actually the technology of Secret Double Octopus is based on my postdoc research. Now I wanna start with a little story. Let's say you work in a company and your job is to protect a treasure. Now this treasure is located in a big hole and that hole has 100 doors. In order to protect the treasure, you have 100 employees, each hold a key to one of the doors. Now each employee is responsible to lock the door and keep the key. Now, if I'm the bad guy, in most cases, all I need to do is just try to open each one of the door and I will find one door that is left open. And why is that? Because we're human and we're making mistakes. And same with organizations. You know, the treasure is of course the organization assets. And these hundred doors with keys are actually the many services that you have in your organizations and the passwords that your users are using to uh, authenticate to that services. And the attacker needs only one user to make a mistake, only one user on, or only one door to be left open in order to get into the hole, to get into your organization and put uh, his hands on your assets. Now, I think the first time I saw this number, I was actually amazed. 81% of hacking related breaches are actually caused by either weak or stolen password. Think about it, like four out of five attacks are, are caused by passwords. And when I'm rethinking about it, it seems actually a little bit reasonable to me because the whole security of your organization is actually depends on the weakest user. And this is the real, uh, the real bad news about passwords. Think about it, the attacker needs only one user to make a mistake, only one user to choose their own password, only one user to open their own file or only one user to link the wrong click. And this must be changed. We need to change the equation. We need to take out the user of that equation. The user does not have to uh, uh, remember the password, choose the password or keep the password. It must be changed. And this is what we're going to do. We are doing actually at Secret Double Octopus. So do we know how to select our passwords? I assume that by the end of the video that I'm gonna show you, uh, you will uh, agree with me that we don't know how to select how to select our passwords. And today, when we select our password, we need a password that we can remember and no one else can guess. And such password actually does not exist because you know we can have a password and we can actually pass uh, the organization password policy by capitalize the first letter and add some number at the end and even exclamation mark. But and we think that we have a strong password, but we don't. We have a really weak password. So. I would like to show you a short video and uh, convince you that we don't really know how to choose our passwords. We're talking about cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Chihuahua Papillon. And what's its name? Jameson. Jameson. And where'd you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hempfield Area Senior High School. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, great. It's like my cat's name and then just like a random number. Okay. Has you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my childhood pet. Aw. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. Mm -hmm. So like a password of yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like number one? Uh, like my birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. And what year were you born? Uh, 95. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So Jolie, 6, 12, oh, 95. Yes. Got it. So you mean to give my password right now? No, I cannot do that. But we all want to know what it is so we can tell you if it's strong or not. Oh my goodness. Um, um, let me think. Okay, one is Tel Aviv. Yeah. Four, six, eight. And then Israel. It's, it's only three, but it's, you know, it's, uh, for me it's strong enough. Ireland, one, two, three, four. Gemma, one, two, three. Spell G-E-M-M-A. <laughs> well, most of them are Italian. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, like so what? like. Like what's a good Italian password? Uh, my grandma's name. What's your grandma's uh, name? Uh, Maria. Maria. 
So Maria is your password? Oh yeah, now you know my password. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so we don't know how to choose the password and password uh, actually have of course security issues. But not only, it actually has also uh, user experience issues. You know, passwords actually uh, add like endless daily friction. We need to remember which password we need to use for we, for each uh, for each service. And uh, you know, it happens to all of us that we want to authenticate to some service and we can't remember the password. So now we use the option to reset our password. So now we need to wait to uh, reset mail or we need to wait to someone uh, to answer for us in the support center. And at that period of time, we can't access the service that we wanted to, to, to get into. Uh, or we do remember our password, but now the service actually forces us to uh, change the password. And we need to choose a password that is different than the last three passwords that we that we already used. So you know it's like a big headache for users, and uh, in most of the cases, it uh, it actually requires also support from the IT. And you know, try to uh, add a service or to change a service when the authentication method is based on password. You know, it won't be an easy task to to, to do. And the bottom line is that authentication is actually a big headache. And this is something that must be changed because this is like we authenticate 10 times uh, uh, a day to, to many services and during our, our work. And this must be changed. We need to have like a friendly uh, user experience. And of course, we can't compromise security. You know, I'm also a lecturer. And, you know, I always telling my uh, students that there is like a clear trade-off between uh, security and user experience. So we for sure need a user-friendly uh, process, but we can't compromise security. And the last thing about password is uh, their cost. Actually, managing password uh, costs quite a lot to organizations. And between 20 to 50% of help desk calls are actually for password reset. And each such call costs organization around $25. So make the calculation uh, yourself, but for small organization with 10K employees, it will cost them almost $1 million and up to $16 million for an uh, organization with 200,000 employees. This is like a huge uh, amount of, uh, of money that organizations are actually, uh, actually spend on password reset calls. So we have uh, issues this with security, with user experience, and with the cost. Now, what happens this day? This day, when the COVID nineteen is everywhere. Actually, in Israel, we are now in our in our uh, second wave, and there is a global shift to cloud infrastructure. Uh, everyone is working from home. It means that sensitive information is actually out of physical domain, out of uh, network perimeter, and it's actually a huge attack surface for the attacker and uh, maybe a secure authentication solution is now more important than it ever was. So what is the solution? Can we just add a multi-factor authentication? Can we just have a second factor to our passwords? You know, this is of course much better than just having username and password, but it's far from being enough because as I said, passwords have um, uh, consideration with uh, security, with cost, and with user experience. You may think that you maybe solve the security uh, issues with passwords, but you still have the cost and the user experience. And maybe it's amazing, but I actually heard some vendor, MFA vendor, saying that if you have a second factor, you can actually compromise password policy, like validation period or length. This is a dangerous approach because it actually means that you're giving up your first factor and you are left with only a single factor, your second factor, whatever that is, but you are left with only one single factor. And this is not what you meant when you wanted to uh, have an MFA solution. So what you do need to have is indeed MFA, but a passwordless MFA. None of the, none of the factors should be based on password. And you know, choosing the right MFA for you is not an easy decision to make because you need to find a solution that is, of course, highly secure every step of the way, and it has to be uh, user friendly, and above all, it has to answer your needs, the organization needs. So let's talk about your needs. Let's say that you know what you want on the client side. You find for yourself a client MFA. You you know a, a passwordless client MFA. 
and none of the factors uh, actually um, is based on password. And it can be, I don't know, mobile application, it can be an external key, but you know what you want on the client side. What about the services in your organization? If this is your uh, situation, you only have web applications or cloud services, then you're done. There are many providers that you can choose from. Some of them will give you more, some of them will give you less. Uh, most of them will give you single sign-on to your web uh, services. And if, to be honest, you don't need Secret Double Octopus if this is your environment. But what if you have also workstations that are connected to on-prem Active Directory? What if you have Exchange Server? What if you have Linux Server? What if you have, and today it's uh, even more popular, VPN or VDI. Now when everyone uh, is working from home, this is very popular uh, applications. And what if you have legacy applications, which is maybe the most complicated use case for authentication solution? If this is your environment, then the straightforward solution for web application won't give you um, uh, support for all these kind of services. You will need a solution that can give you authentication to uh, authentication solution to Windows machine, to Mac OS machine. You will need a solution that support LDAP, Redis, REST API in order to get a support for all uh, these services in your organization. And this is, if this is your case, then you have a hybrid enterprise and you need a solution that can support the hybrid enterprise. So what would be a solution? The good, uh, the best solution for you, of course, would be without password, as I said, and it has to support all the services in your organization. So we can talk about passwordless authentication without mentioning FIDO. FIDO actually defined authentication standard. As you can see, it is supported by maybe the most uh, biggest and most important uh, players in the market. Um, it is based, uh, the authentication solution, passwordless authentication solution is actually based on uh, PKI, a uh, public key infrastructure, uh, and it uh, actually defines a challenge response protocol where the server actually randomly generates a challenge, send the challenge to the FIDO authenticator through the FIDO client, the FIDO authenticator signs the challenge, send it back through the FIDO client to the FIDO server, and the server that maintains a public key of the FIDO authenticator can verify the challenge. This is a great solution, elegant, classic for web applications. Again, uh, not FIDO implementation cannot solve you the whole, all of the services in your organization. It cannot solve legacy application. It cannot solve, for example, a reduce uh, applications. Then you need more than just FIDO implementation in order to get a full solution to your organization. So if you think that uh, you may have like a, um, a solution that can, so can provide you a solution to web services, then I want you to see these numbers. 70% of customers still support on-premise uh, equipment. And more than that, 64% of authentications are actually to legacy applications. So if you have a solution that support only web services, in 64% of the time, your users will need to type their password. So uh, if uh, you care about security as well as user experience, then actually an over 60% of, of companies prioritize user experience as their main motivation, then you don't target your main motivation if you uh, have a solution that uh, can offer you only passwordless authentication to web applications. A hybrid environment requires a hybrid uh, solution or a solution that can support the hybrid uh, environment. And this is where Secret Double Octopus is actually comes into the picture because we support all these kind of services. We support all these kind of uh, applications and protocols. We will give you a solution, of course, to the straightforward web applications, as well as all legacy applications, um, workstations, Windows and Mac OS. We will give you a solution for offline, for online mode, where, when you are connected to the internet, as well as to the offline mode, when you don't have connection to the internet. Uh, we will give you a solution to legacy applications. Uh, actually, with our solution, you can get a full and complete solution to your organization. And what about the client side? You can choose out of three options. The first option is actually the Octopus application. It will be as easy as just approve authentication, uh, a push notification, and then have some second factor, like you, you can smile to the camera or put your finger, some second factor that your uh, mobile device supports. The second option is to have any FIDO authenticator. Since our server is actually FIDO certified server, you can use any FIDO authenticator uh, and you will have a FIDO flow 
but with all the support that we can give you, the Secret Arable Octopus actually can give you um, so a FIDO authentication for all your services. And the third option is actually something that I'm very proud of, is our ability to integrate to any existing MFA solution. Let's say that you have in your organization already installed uh, uh, Okta or Duo or RSA or Forgeop or Ping or I don't know, any other MFA solution. Now, instead of telling you, okay, now throw everything you have and come and in, in, install our solution, we will tell you, no, keep everything you have and add everything you don't have. So in that sense, we will give you the support, you know, the backend support to all the services that Secret Double Octopus can provide authentication solution to. But when the user needs to approve the authentication request, he will continue to use the same application that he used to, the same application that is already installed uh, in the mobile device. So this actually enables a transparent shift to our solution from the existing MFA solution to users. This is like amazing. It's, you don't need to train the users to, uh, to use a different application. And of course, beside the fact that they won't need to type their password, which is a big advantage. So this is, uh, again, we have three options, our Octopus application, any FIDO authenticator, and any third-party MFA if you already have one installed in your company. And this is a patented technology. So let's see how it looks like from the user perspective. So the user needs to type uh, the username and press enter, that's it. Then the user will get the push notification on the mobile application. As you can see, the user approves the authentication request and smile to the camera and the user is logged in. We will also automatically open for the user a web portal, organization portal, with many services under single sign-on. So if the user needs to authenticate to some, to one of that services, then he won't need to re-authenticate to the service. So as simple as that, just approving uh, a push notification, uh, put uh, or pass a second factor, and you are logged in with a web portal that is automatically open for you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the flow, the high level flow of our solution. Where is the magic? How, how, how do we do it for the users? So let's say the user wants to log into to the workstation, the user types uh, his username and the, this authentication request is actually uh, arrives to the Octopus authentication server, which is located on-prem inside the customer network. The Octopus authentication server needs to get the approve from the user. So let's say that uh, um, we are using the Octopus mobile application, then the user will get push notification to the mobile application. The user will approve that authentication request, pass a second factor. And once the authentication is approved by the user, the server can check the password policy. Now, when, when I'm talking about password policy, maybe the most important thing is how often do we want to replace the password for the user? We are doing password rotation for users. So, some of the uh, customers want to change the password for the user for each authentication request. This is actually how we work inside Secret Double Octopus. But some customers, they say, oh no, we, you know, it's enough for us to change the password once a day. Some, some of them will say it's enough for us to, to change or to replace password once a week or once a month or once in 90 days. But let's say that we need to change the password for the user at this authentication. Then the server will, will randomly generate a password for that session for that user. The password will save that password on the Active Directory, and it will send the password encrypted, of course, to the PC agent on the workstation. Now the workstation, which is the only entity that actually can decrypt the password that, uh, that he gets from the server, uh, reveal the password and complete the authentication to Active Directory with the username and the password. By the end of each authentication flow, the server also send the encrypted password to the mobile application. And this is for the offline mode. Let's say that now you want to authenticate to your machine, to your workstation, but you don't have internet connection. So we, we have a BLE channel between the mobile application and the PC agent and the uh, in the, the workstation, and the password is actually sent encrypted over that channel, over that BLE channel. Now, regarding user experience, it's going to be the same user experience as in the online mode. So both modes, online and offline, looks the same. 
uh, from the user perspective. In both cases, the user will get push notification, he will have to approve the authentication request, and he will have to pass a second factor. No pin code for offline, no, I don't know, no password for offline. Same user experience for online and offline mode. Now you may say, okay, you are saying that you are a passwordless authentication, passwordless solution, but you are managing password. So we must talk about the alternatives. If you want to log in to Active Directory, on-prem Active Directory, then there are two options to do so. One is to do to manage password the way we do it. And the, the other option is to, uh, to use certificates. If you use a certificate-based solution, you must be aware to the fact that, that there are many legacy applications that won't support certificate. So in that case, in those applications, your users will need to know their AD password and to type their AD password. So beside the whole insecurity, you know, you won't even get passwordless experience for your uh, users. So we believe that this is the only way um, to have a true passwordless experience and two true passwordless solution uh, for your organization. Uh, and managing password, this is the only way to do so. As I said, we also uh, provide the ability to authenticate with FIDO Authenticator. So in that case, we have the same flow as in uh, the mobile application, except the fact that when the user need to approve the authentication request, he will do it with a FIDO Authenticator, such as a YubiKey, Fatia, like external key, or such as uh, embedded fingerprint on the laptop. Um, so in that case, the FIDO server is our, of course, FIDO um, Octopus uh, server, and the FIDO client would be the PC agent, Octopus agent installed on the workstation. So when the user, when the server needs to get the approve from the user, we will have a FIDO flow. Um, the FIDO authenticator will sign a challenge and send back the certificates. The FIDO server will verify the uh, the challenge, will verify the signature coming from the FIDO authenticator. Again, here we also have a uh, offline mode, which is from the user perspective, it looks exactly the same as in the online mode. Uh, we are using the HMAC secret extension of the CTAP uh, protocol from uh, the FIDO Alliance. And uh, with that extension, uh, we have the AD password encrypted in the PC agent. And uh, only when the FIDO authenticator is set, and only when the user passes the second factor of the FIDO authenticator, this password can be decrypted and the, um, uh, the PC agent can complete the local authentication. And this is on offline mode. The last uh, option, as I said, is to use third-party MFA. In that case, again, same flow. Uh, with password rotation, with the uh, random password that are generated for the user, uh, everything goes the same. Again, beside the way that the user approves this authentication request. In that case, uh, when the Octopus server will get the authentication request from the PC agent, uh, he will actually the, the server actually pass this authentication request to the third party server, and the third party server will communicate its third party client and uh, to get the reply from the client and. Uh, send back this reply from the client to the Octopus server. And from that on, the server can continue the flow the same as it was our own application. So we have, again, the Octopus mobile application, any FIDO authenticator, and any third-party MFA. This is the three options to use uh, our um, uh, solution with all the support in the server side. So let me conclude by saying that uh, going passwordless is actually a journey. And you know you can't say that you you can't expect to adopt a solution today and become passwordless tomorrow. This is this is not going to happen. You need to have a vendor or to have a solution that can go with you step by step, user by user, and service by service to a passwordless um, uh, experience. And this solution, of course, must be highly secure. It must actually uh, integrate to exist your existing infrastructure. And I didn't even talk about the uh, security of our solution because we don't have time for that. But uh, we secure our solution uh, with the same way that the uh, USA government secured the uh, launch code of their nuclear weapons. So this is like an unbreakable algorithm that we're using on top of the traditional security, of course, the traditional encryption. Uh, that everyone is using. So this solution is actually much more secure than any other uh, alternative that you may find in the market. Uh, as I said, 
we leverage your existing solution instead of replacing them if you already have uh, something uh, installed. And the last thing is please don't leave any password behind. Don't have a solution that can't uh, solve all the services in your organization because as you remember, the attacker needs only one way to get into your organization, only one password to compromise, only one door that is left open in order to get into your organization and puts uh, his hand on your assets. So uh, thank you very much for listening. And you can find more at www.doubleoctopus.com and you can contact me directly. Uh, thank you very much.